Yo, 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 what's up, 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 how you doing out there in the world today, what's up, yo, it's your boy, you know, if you've been, um, you know, watching my channel, you know, or you know, you notice that I haven't been posting videos like that. I was uh, fasting from the YouTube and um, most social medias. It's a lot going on in the world today, you know. It's not all positive. I guess everything isn't meant to be all positive, but you know. You can always hope, right? So, you know. What's going on? What's going on? I hope everybody is okay. I hope people are feeling okay today, accomplished, or I hope people is feeling accomplished. You know, that's what I mean to say. I hope people feel energy. You hear the birds? The bird out there always, always chirpy, always around this time. It be killing me because sometimes I be breaking night. A lot of times I do, right? And it's like, and right when I get ready to go to bed, boom, there he go. You know what I'm saying? But I take that as a blessing. That's him. That's the nature, you know, playing this beautiful music. But today, I want to talk about, um, you know, childhood and like how it was to be a child. You know, I feel like. The inter the, the 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 electronics is stifling, though it's advancing at the same time. I feel like it's stifling the children's growth. Now here's why. When I was young, when a lot of the kids around me was young, you know what I'm saying? This was in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was different. Like, it had a lot of ran down lots, empty lots, a lot of broken glass all over places, streets all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Crack valves when I was in school, all in the schoolyard, just littering the schoolyard. You know what I'm saying? Blue tops, red tops, yellow tops, that type of stuff. That energy. You feel me? It's back in the days. I would say it's back in the days now because now we're in 2020 and it seems like, what, like almost 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But anyhow, right? When we was children, we didn't have electronics like that. You know, the computer came out, the first big computer, I believe, don't quote me, Somewhere in the 80s. Could have been the 70s, the prototype. But let's say the 80s. The first computer was as big as the room or a room, like a wall, right? With as much computing power of a, let's say, an iPad. Probably, uh, 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 not an iPad, pardon me. Like an a, a, a iPod or like a calculator. It didn't have... The, the, the super computing power that it has today, you know. And when we was children, you know, there was really a big emphasis on, like, the board games. You know, you played board games. It was like a family thing, you know. It wasn't like you played board games by yourself. It was something that was designated for when your parents, your aunts, you know, everybody was together in the same house. And I remember, me personally remember playing Monopoly like that. You know what I'm saying? With like a good seven, eight people. And um, I was little and I was enjoying it. You know, those was good times. I feel like those board games help with like community. It, it, it helped family bond with each other. It's like It was like you spending time with each other and you got to do something fun together, right? You had toys, you had nothing but action figures and stuff like that, right? 
you know, or you was able to go outside. Now, the thing with the going outside and, you know, playing with the toys, children back in the 80s, and this is just from my experience, you know, we had to use our imagination a lot. You know, our imagination was everything. We didn't have much. We was poor back in the days also. It was terrible for black people back in the eighties. It was it was it was it was it was poor. It was it was you know what I'm saying? We was we wasn't we didn't have much, you know. I remember, you know, they had food stamps back in the eighties, paper stamps, you know what I'm saying? Paper money, like booklet and all that. And I remember, you know what I'm saying, when you, instead of you going to the store like you do now and you use your card, you know, your EBT card or whatever, you know, I don't have one, but use that, you know what I'm saying, you can just get whatever food you want. Back then, back then, it was like they gave you food before the, like, the stamps. I remember this. I remember it was like powdered milk. It was like the super block of cheese. It, you know, like bread, and I don't really remember too much, but I remember the milk because it was like powdered milk, and the taste of it was like whoa, you know what I'm saying? And then it was the cheese. But long story, anyhow, right? So imagination went a long way with children back in the days. You know what I'm saying? It it was like you go outside, you had to play. You know, you had a certain amount of games. You had um. You know, uh, Scully. You know, with the with the with the with the tops of the juice bottles. You just get it. You put the wax in it. You know what I'm saying? And you just flick it. Boop, 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 boop. You know what I'm saying? Now you got a new game. You know what I'm saying? You draw the little Scully box with the little. You know what I'm saying? The squares in it and all that. And you shooting. You shooting the Scullys. They had marbles. You know what I'm saying? Um. You know, tag, freeze tag. You know. Um, and then things that you had to come up with, like, you know, what, when the games back then was like cops and robbers and, you know, that game I think was by design, not really too good because it kind of, you know, look at it today, you know what I'm saying? They look at black people like, like if they playing cops and robbers, but you know, imagination, 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 you feel me? It gave you a way to use your brain, like, to think, to, like, yo, we don't have it, so let's create something. Yo, you know, when you was a child, if you wasn't playing none of those games, you would sit on the stoop, or you would sit in your yard, you know, you was little. You know, I was little. I wasn't out there doing crazy things when I was little at all, like, not even at all, not even a little bit, you know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't in the streets when I was little like that. I mean, I would ride my bike. You know what I'm saying? You know, with parental supervision, of course, man. You know what I'm saying? Things a little different now. But, you know, you'd be on your stoop, whatever you play. Um, You know, um, that's my car. My car. Um, Kids got together. They play house. You know what I'm saying? All this imagination things, base games where you was able. And, and, and believe it or not, the children back then had a blast. It was the best thing ever. We used to make obstacle courses over the things in the house and play and jump around and jump from bed to bed. You can't touch the floor. You act like the floor was lava. You had to like jump on things to get around the room and you know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? These games or, you know, were, 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 were phenomenal. Or you had your toys and you had to come up with a whole concept of what you playing with, what's going on. A whole world. Me and my cousin used to play, like, with Mad. I used to have Mad G.I. Joes. We used to just take G.I. Joes. I had Thundercats. I had, like, G.I. Joe planes. All types of stuff like that. We used to sit together and we used to create worlds. We used to set people up here, there, there, give them cars, you know what I'm saying? Create buildings out of like the bed and out of the, the tables and such and such and so and so. And we would just imagine a whole world and we would play with them toys forever. Like it, it was endless. That was our video game back in the day. So fast forward into today. Now you got children with the tablets with the cell phones you know what i'm saying 
And what I believe is happening is now that you get to just kind of, they're watching other people do things, right? Instead of coming up with things to do themselves. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they're kind of like killing the imagination, you know, in children. You know what I'm saying? Video games don't really allow you to have an imagination more so than a wondrous, like wonder, like wow, whoa, wow. You know, you play a game for the first time, you know what I'm saying? And you get to experience that game for the first time. But if somebody else imagined that game. You see what I'm saying? So you're playing somebody else's imagination, you know? And I feel like technology nowadays is like killing the imagination in the children. Now, imagination is important because, I mean, when you comes when it comes to dreams or when it comes to ideas, when it comes to, you know, creations and stuff and, and things of this, of things like that, you know what I'm saying? It's like you, 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 it's hard to do it for children nowadays, you know what I'm saying, like, if you don't have your phone, if you don't have your tablet, or, you know what I'm saying, children don't know what to do no more, it's not like they can have, have, you know, some kids still do it, you know, I mean, it's inherited, some kids, I believe, you know what I mean, to have a, have a strong imagination, you know, um, but not like how we was back in the days when we really didn't have it. And all we had was our imagination, you know what I'm saying, to play with things or whatever we had or to make the best out of things, whatever we could get our hands on, you know. And I feel like nowadays the technology is, 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 is not really dumbing them down per se, but I feel like it's, 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 it's hindering their ability to create is like now instead of you being a, a leader doing what you want to do but in a way where it's based off of how you think or you know what i'm saying as a child to entertain yourself now if a child doesn't have the youtube to look at or you know children can swipe or you know watch little cartoons on the t on the actual cell phone and such, you know, or whatever, tablet, laptop, desktop, whatever, you know, I feel like they don't have the same ability, now they're just being fed ideas from everything else, you know, when we was little, it was like Sesame Street, Romper Room, uh, Reading Rainbow, uh, Where is Harmon San Diego? You know, um, those type of shows, uh, 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 what's the one with the lady that passed away with the lamb, lamb chopping friends, like those were what we used to watch. So it was like, okay, you know, it was more interactive thing to watch. It was more learning, you know what I'm saying? And then after that was over, you had to go, you know, either go outside and, you know, get into your games like that. Or you went and got with your toys or, you know what I'm saying, and got like that. You know, this is personally my experience, what I've seen, you know what I'm saying. I had a very active imagination. That's why I could, you know, I come up with certain things as I, as I grew up. I could still utilize these things. And what I'm realizing, because I had to detach from the internet for a while, was like, the more you detach from the internet and from... Just people in general, it's not even nothing wrong with the people. It's just sometimes you got to do it for yourself, you know, because what happens is like you are bombarded with ideas every day and from all angles. And it's hard to decipher your own original ideas and thoughts and such and so from the ones that's been implanted without even knowing because people don't even realize they do these things but maybe some people do but it takes away from your imagination nonetheless you know and i actually got to be able to start to hear the voice in me like the my actual thoughts like yo what makes you happy like how do you feel when you hear that or when you do this or when you see this okay let's create this let's get let's do that 
and it was more so um coming from what after I cut out everything it, it was I can I can tell like yo a lot of things I was doing was based on other people you know in my head without me realizing it and children are that way because they they are influential so when you get these internets and these you know these new new things where instead of you actually having to come up with a whole concept like an imaginary world or 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 you know a imaginary scenario in order to have fun with you or your friends you know you get together you're like yo let's do this we're gonna imagine this this that that and everybody was with it because you know it, it, that's all we really had. You couldn't bring your toys outside, so you wouldn't be playing with your toys outside. Some kids did, you know what I'm saying? It was playing all in the dirt with the toys, you know, get that real nature kind of feel because, you know, that's how, you know, we felt. We watched the cartoon and we'd get the toys and we'd be playing with the toys and boom, 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 boom. So what I'm saying is, like, nowadays we don't have, we don't have that, real imaginative spirit when you're being told see imagination leads to critical thinking in the future like your own self-thought like you know thinking outside the box you know what i'm saying um um um, um critical problem solving skills you know comes from imagination because in your imagination you get to play out scenarios you know what I'm saying? And you get to, as you get older, you realize you can critically think based on, you know, examples that were set by people before you or just people in your in your age group or, you know, those sort of natures. It, it, imagination leads to critical thinking and thinking outside the box. So when you have a computer you know, where you can get 24-7 access to everything, you know, like certain shows, certain this, you could binge watch this, you could do that, you know, if you don't already have these critical thinking skills when you're watching it, when you're being, you know, it's like worse programming. Back in the day, TV's programming only had a few channels. In the 80s, we, it was only like 11 channels, and then you had channel 13, channel 25, you know, we might have had like channel 40-something, which probably was a Spanish channel. You know, anybody that lived back in this day, my age, because I was little when this time, but anybody that was older, they, they, they're they going to relate to what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Um, We had to put the antenna, you know what I'm saying, put the hanger in the TV, you know what I'm saying, get the, get the fuzz black and white. It wasn't no real color. It wasn't no real stimulants. You know what I'm saying? To really bow. Nowadays, like the programming on television is retarded. 24 hours, cartoon channels, 24 hours. This, we had to wake up on one day, Saturday, Saturday, or to watch cartoons basically all morning, and then it was over. And then on the weekdays, it was only, it was only early, 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 early in the morning. Like, before you was, by, you getting ready for school, though. You know, you know what I mean? You wasn't watching that. And then it was like, um, from three o'clock to five o'clock, you had four cartoons. So it was, that was like our like prime time time. Like we, that's our, what well, we like, yo, this cartoon coming on at this time, this time on this channel, you know, the He-Mans, the Thundercats, you know what I'm saying? The G.I. Joe cartoons, the Bionic 6 cartoons. A lot of people don't remember those, you know what I'm saying? The, um, uh, Silverhawk cartoons, you know what I'm saying? Um, 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 the you know those type of shows, you know, and basically what I'm saying is the programming now is more definite, like it's more like in your face, like you can get it wherever, like you you don't even have to watch TV. You could get um, you know, they got they even got other channels, free channels like Pluto TV and 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 Fire Sticks and and and, and little antennas that you can hook up to the TV that got a little set of channels. Now, all this to say that I believe, me personally, I believe technology is hindering the imagination of the children, you know what I'm saying, and not allowing them to be able to think outside the box is, is what, like, keeps them put in, in a box, if you understand. So, we can't fault our people for being a certain way or 
behaving a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Because ultimately they wasn't born that way. You know, the influences. If you didn't have a real good, rich childhood where you got to run and play and laugh and joke, then a lot of times you don't have that, like, that inner child, that inner child that be inside of a lot of us is still scarred from a lot of the lack, a lot of the disappointments, you know. And um, it's like sometimes it's hard to think your way out, out of these problems. Whereas like you in a box because it's in your mind or it's in your emotion. You know what I'm saying? And it's not that serious. Now, I'm just talking about children and mentalities. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about anybody other than that, really. This is not one of those conversations. This is just a conversation that is like, okay, boom. I just realized, like, yo, when I was young and shit, I was young. It was like, yo, we didn't have a lot of stuff. But we still had, you couldn't tell us we we wasn't going to have fun doing things coming right out of our heads. Now it's like difficult for a lot of children to come up with things out of their heads. If you was to take cell phones and tablets from your children and you tell them, yo, play something, it'd be, it'd be hard. That's why when my daughters and them used to come over, you know what I'm saying? When they was little, when they was young, they wanted to come over. Yeah, I let them play with the cell phone because, and I realized that was like me being lazy. So then I started doing things like I would show them how to make paper boats. I would show them how to make little paper ninja stars. I would make up a little target and put little circles on the target, put it up. And I'd be like, yo, all right, now over here, I'll get little things. I'd be like, yo, these are the prizes or when to get this or that, right? And we're sitting here and we just create games because I want them to learn in, in, in essence how to use their imagination to have fun. Because if anything happens to the internet, if anything happens to the TV, if anything happens to the grid that we are so dependent on, it's going to be difficult for people to, you feel like you lost a part of you if you lose your phone. You know what I'm saying? Your tablet. So you can imagine how a child feel once they, with that they remember when we was little, we used to be like, yo, this is my toy. Like, we used to be on it with our toys, right? We used to be like, yo, I'm not sharing my toy. Or you let somebody you really like play with your toy. They, you know what I'm saying? You didn't really, somebody you didn't really want playing with your toy, you go get your toy. You was real possessive with your toy. I could see children being that way. So it would be even harder for children to break away from that and realize what's going on. So I feel like we have to start letting our children grow, like, you know, with more exercise to their imagination. We got to start cutting off some of the tablets and the iPhones. Now, it's hard now because you got to do homeschool and they're going to be sitting in front of the computer the whole time. And it's not going to be what they want to do. So after they finish that, you know what I'm saying? They're going to want to go and do what they want to do on that same device. A lot of children's eyes are going to go bad with the, with the cell phone. got worse eyes. You know what I'm saying? Um... These are just some of the issues I see with, like, you know, when I was young, we didn't have all this. And even when we did start getting cell phones, the biggest game on our cell phones at first was the snake game. And it was like some crazy looking game. It didn't even look official like that. You know what I'm saying? And then the sidekicks came out and they had like the asteroid game. And that game was fun. I ain't gonna hold you. That game was good. You know, but this is as we got older. But main premise of this conversation is to state that imagination is important. It's a spiritual gift. It's something that you can use because what people fail to realize is your imagination is actually something real. It's just light in weight. It's light. It's a thought form, but it has a weight and it has an ideal to it. You see what I'm saying? You can use these things. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's like a reality that just hasn't manifested itself, if that makes sense. 
So the dove into your imagination is able, you was teaching yourself how to hold thoughts in your mind, ideas, scenarios, and create these things. And that's just on a deeper level, but I'm not going to go there right now. This, this one conversation is just all about the children and the difference between growing up in the 80s versus growing up now. You know what I'm saying? In a world where you had to use your imagination or you was just going to be bored. Like seriously bored. To a time now where you don't really have to use your imagination. It's like the whole device does it for you. If you ever notice sometimes if a person, you know when a person has an imagination that they could search the way they search things. You know what I'm saying? If they just scrolling up and down the um, you know, the home page on YouTube, this is just an example, it's not really imagination, you're just looking to see what other people put up, like, okay, let me watch this, this is interesting, which is cool too, but then you have certain people that's like, okay, let me look for this, let me look for that, the internet main purpose is so that you can see things that you may not be able to see at this present moment, like, find out things that's going on in the world where you might not go. You know, like where you might not end up at or see animals that you haven't known to exist or see animals just in a habitat. Like you could just jump around. So the Internet is, is it's like how you use it. You know what I'm saying? But still in all, I feel like imagination is being slowly but surely killed by dictatorship, by like what we want you to think. We'll give you a few narratives and you can put this in your head instead of you coming up with your own games. Because if we was children now and back then that had that same idea, we can create all kinds of games. We could have created board games. Skelly could have been a created board game. Nobody put Skelly on a board game. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a street game, but still in all, that's a, that could be a board game. Nobody created, nobody put a scully board in a box and said, yo, here are these tops. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's just free game right there, but, you know, I just that just popped up in my mind. That's something that I'm thinking like, damn, I should have held that back. I shouldn't have said nothing about that. But that's just a thought. You know what I'm saying? So it's your boy. You know what I'm saying? Names, titles, all that stuff is really irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? I do music sometimes independently. I don't really care about the money that comes from it because I'm not making money. But the money controls, the I feel, the artist. So I don't really care for it because then I could just talk about whatever. I could talk about God or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And um, speaking of God, before I go, I want to say something. I want to, um, my paint pants. I'll be painting. Hold on. All right, pardon that, man, pardon that, all right? So I want to express something real quick, man, all right? After the, after the imagination thing. I was reading this Bible on Matthew um, 25, all right? And um, Matthew 25, before my time run out real quick, I just want to say something to read this because I don't want, you know, this to be longer than what I thought. But check this out, all right? Um, where it says, uh, boom. Uh, damn, so this is this I don't know, man. Um Boom. All right. Listen to this. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you. For the foundation of the world, right? For I was a hungered and you gave me meat. I was hungry. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when when saw we thee? A hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king said, "Shall and the king shall answer and say unto them, Rarely, I say unto you, 
in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. All right. Now, I just wanted to express that because it speaks about being in jail. A lot of people think like, you know, first of all, these are virtues and these are principles and these are ideals and things to help you live a better life type stuff, basically, too. You know what I'm saying? But it speaks about prison. A lot of people that talk about, you know, Christ in a certain in, in from this book, forget all about that part. Like Jesus Christ in this book or Yeshua or the idea of these persons because it wasn't really people, but it was a it was an idea. It was something that came from the inside of a person. And you know what I'm saying? They take it and try to make it perfect. Like if, you know, you go to prison, that's that's not, you know, it's bad. And, it is, and, and I guess it would be considered bad. But, you know, in the same book, you know, where if somebody would look down on somebody that just came out of prison and, you, and, 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 and a lot of people worship and praise these words. And if you're living these words, then you have to listen to what he say. He didn't say. He expressed it as, okay, when I was like this, when I was like that, because it's the red letters. When I was like this, when I was like that, when I was like that, you helped me, right? Now, the people he talking to was like, how'd you help me? How'd you help me? I, when, when did I help you? I don't remember that. And he's like, well, as long as you, whenever you did that for any one of your brethren, the least one of your brethren, the least person that uh, your brethren, brothers or sisters, then you did it for me. And in reverse, if you didn't do it for any one of your brothers, then you didn't do it for me. You see what I'm saying? And and it, it was, you know, like, so I just wanted to express that to people because to to utilize these things, this, this text or whatever, or all texts, you got to have an imagination to interpret what you're reading. Now, all these are interpretations. And somebody created these out of their own ideologies because of what was around them at the time. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, that's for a whole nother day. I didn't want to lose myself in that. I just wanted to express that personally because it says it right here. A lot of people look at, you know, Christ. And I say Christ because it's just a title. But they look at Christ like, oh, you know what? Is he, you know, this and that. He's not like that. Those people, and they look down on people. And that's not what they're supposed to be doing at all. You're not supposed to be looking down at nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be judging anything. You know what I'm saying? At the as far as because 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 if somebody point the finger at you, then are you perfect? Are you are you flawless and blameless within the matter of society or in the matter of just God? Period. You know because it's and it's deeper than what I just read, but I just needed to show people that you can use these these words to create a better outlook of things in society. 